evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's 7.30. Let me call to order the July 21st, 2015 meeting of the Merrimack Planning Board. Let me remind everyone who is to speak to the board today to remember to sign in on the clipboard and make sure the microphone's turned on and speak clearly into it so the folks at home can hear you. Uh, by way of announcement, our next planning board meeting will be August 4th at 7 p.m. in the Matthew Thornton Room, and that's 7, a change from our usual 7.30. It'll also be a joint uh, meeting for part of our deliberations with the Conservation Commission. Let me appoint Nelson and Jeff to be voting members for the vacancy and for Mike's position. And that will give us six planning board members here tonight. Um, with that, the first item on our agenda is our planning and zoning administrator's report. Uh, just a reminder that meeting times changed to seven in August. Um, also, the medical marijuana zoning ordinance amendments were introduced by the town council on July 18th, and the pu planning board public hearing for recommendation to the council will be on August 18th, with the council public hearing on August 20th. Thank you, Jillian. Are there any other questions by members of the board for staff? Seeing none, let's move on to item three on our agenda, which is Button Homes LLC as the applicant, and Donna Kazmierczyk. Would it be worth written case in what is interested to know that that's being postponed? Oh, yeah. So that, thank you for that. Um, let me interrupt the introduction of that one. If anyone's here for um, discussion or comment on item four on our agenda, which is the John J. Flatley Company, uh, that applicant has asked for a continuance to the August 18th meeting, and I would expect that when they get to that agenda item, the board would likely uh, grant that continuance. So you need not stay and wait for that, plan for that planning board item if you're here for that one. Going back to item three on our agenda, Button Homes LLC is the applicant and Donna Kazmierczyk as uh, the owner. Request to amend a previously granted conditional approval from the April 7th, 2015 planning board for a minor subdivision of one lot into two single family residential lots located at 71 Bedford Road in the R Residential and Aquifer Conservation Dix Districts. Tax map 6D, lot 90, and this item is continued from the June 2nd, 2015 planning board meeting. Jillian, what do we need to know before you're from the applicant? Um, at, the, at the June 2nd, 2015 planning board meeting, the board gave the applicant the option of submitting a drainage analysis with peer review to ensure compliance with the regulations in lieu of obtaining the required easement from the original approval. And the applicant has elected to take this option. They submitted a drainage analysis addendum. Um, it received CLD peer review comments, and uh, staff recommends uh, along with CLD that the applicant obtain flow easement rights uh, as recommended um, in the peer review. Thank you, Jillian. Is the applicant here? Thank you for coming. Take a minute to settle in and sign in and then tell us where we're at. Is this on? I don't know. Push it. So we went and had the drainage analysis done and like Julian had said, had the draw, new drawing done up. And um, we are perfectly fine with granting each lot a flowage easement that is needed for the new culverts. And if we can go from there, I'm happy <laughs> to make it short and sweet. <laughs> I appreciate that, <laughs> appreciate that. Um, Jillian, as an amendment, is we don't have to do any um, acceptance or any of that. We do have a waiver request for sidewalks I see in here. Oh, it was already granted. Anything procedurally we need to do other than it take some public testimony? Any questions? Yeah. Okay. Does the board have any questions for the applicant? Only if you wanted to ask for a butter input at this time. Uh, well, I will before. I just yeah. didn't okay. know if you yeah. were going to get the applicant. Yeah. No, I have no further comment. I'm glad to hear that he's willing to do that. Got it sorted yeah. out. Okay. Are there any abutters or citizens who wish to weigh in before the board considers amending this two-lot subdivision? Seeing none, we close the public hearing. Any other comments or questions? What's the will of the board? Mr. J. 
determined, given that the effort that the applicant has gone to um, and it appears to be satisfactory both to the town staff and also to CLD, I'd like to make a motion that we grant the amendment to the original terms and conditions according to the letter dated July 15, 2015 from Gillian House. Is there a second for that motion? Second, second by Ms. Fox. And so that includes all the conditions, obviously. All the conditions are specified in the report, which most of which they seem to have already done, but so. they've just got to comply. I think so, too. If there's no other discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? 6-0-0. Zero, zero. You're all set. Thank you. <laughs> Short and sweet for you as well. <laughs> Perfect. Thank Thanks. Have a great Thank day. You. Thank you. Uh, item four on our agenda is the John J. Flatley Company as the applicant and owner and it is agended for a review for acceptance and consideration of final approval of an application for a site plan to construct 240 multifamily residences, clubhouse and associated parking and drainage improvements per the requirements of the Flatley Mixed Use Conditional Use Permit. The parcels are located at 645, 673, 685, 703, 707 DW Highway in the I-1 Industrial Aquifer Conservation and Wellhead Protection Districts Tax Map 6E Lot 31, 33, 34, 35, and 36. The item has been continued from the June 16th, 2015 Planning Board meeting and as I mentioned a little while ago, the applicant has uh, requested that we continue this item to our August 18th, 2015 meeting and the reason for that is to give them time to address comments by the reviewing engineer as well as to have input from the review by MVD. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we accede to the applicant's request and that we will uh, continue this matter until the planning board meeting on August the 18th at 2015 at 7 p.m. in the Matthew Thornton room, this room here, and that no further notification will occur. Is there a second for that? Second by Mr. Disco. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? 6-0-0 to continue that one to the 18th. Item five on our agenda is Keech Nordstrom Associates, Inc. as the applicant in Valley View, Baroque will trust Carol Maggio, trustee. No, no, I'm sorry, I skipped one. Yeah, I'm skipping Edgebrook ahead. Heights. Um, Edgebrook Heights. <laughs> one CUP, you've heard them all, right? <laughs> Edgebrook Heights, LLC. I'm sorry, item number five. Let me start that we're over. awake, that's all. <laughs> Didn't mean to skip over you. Item five on our agenda. Let me start from the beginning. Edgebrook Heights, LLC. Wigston Properties, LLC. Q. Peter Nash, 1987 Revocable Trust, one as the co-applicants and co-owners. Review for consideration of a six-month extension of a previously approved conditional use permit to permit a future mixed-use development consisting of retail office, multifamily, residential, and assisted living. Parcels are located at 137, 39, 55 in an unnumbered parcel on DW Highway in the I-1 Industrial Aquifer Conservation and Flood Hazard Conservation Districts, Tax Map 1E, Lot 4142, and Tax Map 2E, Lot 6, 2, 7, and 8. Jillian, is there anything that we need to know before we hear from the applicant? Uh, they're, ex they're requesting extension to meet the present conditions of approval that were approved on August 19, 2014. Um, I'll let them explain. Thank you, Jillian. Once you get a chance to sign in, just introduce yourself for the record and tell us where we're at. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, everyone. My name is Brad Westgate. I'm a lawyer with Weiner Bennett in Nashua and have been representing Edgebrook Heights and the other co-owners of the property in this project and uh, one of the principals of Edgebrook Heights LLC, Bernie Plant, is with me. The uh, last year, October, excuse me, August 19, 2014, this board approved the conditional use permit for the mixed use project uh, to be known as Edgebrook Heights. It's a land, of course, across the Daniel Webster Highway from Harris Pond. Um, one of the uh, components of the approval was that certain conditions precedent uh, be satisfied uh, within 12 months of the approval uh, and prior to the planning board endorsing the plan. Uh, the approval, of course, itself is good for two years, so the approval for the conditional use permit runs till August of 2016, but the 12-month uh, time frame pertained to satisfaction of certain of the conditions precedent. So uh, we had requested an extension of that 12-month time frame, not of the two-year approval, but of the 12-month time frame to satisfy the condition precedent. Uh, our request was for a 12-month extension of that 12-month time frame, meaning that the, <coughs> the time to satisfy the conditions precedent would be extended 
to run another 12 months to August of 2016, which would be contemporaneous with the two-year approval period for the permit itself. Um, I'm not sure. I think there was just a typo, frankly, on the notice uh, uh, for the for the meeting in reference to six-month approval uh, permit. Excuse me, six-month uh, extension request, but it was actually a 12-month request, um, and that's noted in uh, Tim Thompson's staff report to you. So, just a, a few other uh, brief comments on it, Mr. Chairman. Um, the staff report uh, d describes pretty well the background circumstances, uh, part of which I've already explained. After we got the conditional use permit uh, within the 30-day appeal period, uh, NIP owner and uh, Nanocomp Technology had uh, appealed the conditional use permit grant to the Superior Court. That appeal is pending. Of course, the town's a party to the appeal. We're interveners on it. Um, and the parties all agreed that that appeal would be put on hold, if you will, or um, stayed uh, until uh, further determination was made regarding the northerly access, which is really the core component of their appeal. Their, their, cons their concern is issues regarding the use of that northerly access because of how Nanocomp and NIP owner presently use it. Uh, so uh, not, um, not to hold up uh, and sort of unnecessarily process litigation, the idea was that that issue will be addressed when a site plan for that particular lot comes in. Um, so uh, this extension really doesn't have anything to do with that particular issue. It simply has to do with the time frame uh, for us to satisfy the conditions precedent under the permit. Um, the uh, uh, Tim Thompson in his staff report recommends uh, granting the extension. He notes that there's been no changes to the ordinance or the regulations that govern this since it was granted last year. Um, he also makes mention of the status of the appeal, uh, which does sort of frustrate getting some of these conditions set. We are very close to uh, having an arrangement with uh, the prospective developer of the uh, multifamily lot and assisted living lot. The developer is interested in both. Um, uh, Bernie's uh, firms will be still be the site developer, if you will, but uh, the negotiations are with a builder for the multifamily and assisted living lot, which we think is going to uh, come together very quickly now. Uh, we anticipate, in fact, probably coming before you sooner rather than later uh, to deal with an amendment to the conditional use permit because there's going to be some design differences that uh, are likely contemplated by that developer. Uh, we also remain very mindful of the mixed use concept and the non-residential component and the phasing idea, and we haven't lost sight of that. So that's all in the forefront of our uh, understanding. But I wanted to just preface uh, our discussion so that you aren't surprised if sooner rather than later you see us on an amendment for the conditional use permit. Just lastly, um, when you take a look at the conditions precedent that were um, that are part of what's contemplated to have first been uh, dealt with within the 12 months of the approval, and you see that it, it's somewhat of an academic exercise if we try to deal with them now, uh, and really makes a sort of duplication of work, and frankly, it's, it's sort of pointless, I think, to uh, impose upon your staff to deal with uh, analyzing these conditions and their satisfaction when we know that there's likely to be amendments to the permit as well. So, for example, if you take a look at even the first three conditions, we're going to have to update our financial impact analysis. Well, that's going to be uh, derivative from uh, how the ultimate first phase is contemplated, both the residential and non-residential, and potential amendments given the uh, arrangements with the prospective developer I've cited. Um, we ha our narrative has to be updated. Of course, if we did the narrative now, it would be somewhat of a academic writing because it'll change based on the ultimate arrangements that are uh, that are put in place as we expect um, the development agreement similarly it would it would be it would be theoretical not reflective of what's going to actually occur so there's sort of no point in doing that but much more of a point in extending the time frame to make that reflect the reality of what we expect will be developed so in a nutshell that's what we were um, contemplating and happy to answer any questions Thank you for your presentation. So you want a 12-month extension from August, so you'll go to August 2016, or a 12-month extension from today, which would go to July of 2016? August of 2015 to August of 2016. Okay. Uh, that's what Tim recommended in his report, by the way. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
-hmm. was supposed to come before you before the 12 months hit, of course. So. And thank you for doing that. <laughs> um, any comments or questions by members of the board? Just, <coughs> just a clarification, please. Um, as I understand, you're talking about the conditional use permit itself, oh, right? Well, and yes, that's what's before you, but technically it's not an extension of the two-year term of the permit. I understand that, right. yeah. Okay, but yeah. we're just, we aren't talking any site plan here. Correct, or we are not. But you're talking about maybe some changes when the site plan gets solidified. Is that Correct. what Correct. If, if what um, we believe will come together does in fact come together for the multifamily and assisted living lots, there's likely to be some lot, a little bit of a lot line shift involving those lots, potentially some uh, change in um, um, layout a little bit on the multifamily side of things, which will require us to amend this permit and then, of course, process it as yeah. a normal full-blown site plan. Yeah. Okay, so you'd, you'd need two, two reviews, right? You'd oh, need to do the process. Okay. Yeah. All right, I just wanted to be clear on that. I was a little bit... Yep, no okay. question about it. Yeah, we you. are mindful that site plan review has got to happen on every lot. Yeah. Yep, and it hasn't yet at this point. Alistair? I was just a bit bothered in some of what you said, and, and I, I'm not trying to nitpick. Um, it seemed to me you're sort of pushing ahead with the, the, the residential bit and the, and the assisted living, but I didn't hear really that you were pushing ahead with the, you know, the commercial side. You said well, you're mindful of it. Well, Mindful doesn't mean much to me. I, it sort of means, well, yeah, we'll, we've got the builder and he's going to be ready to build the units, and we're not going to buy that without something on the commercial. And the other half I didn't like was the thought that you're holding off on the appeal with yourself and, and or the, whatever the word is, between yourselves and NIPO and Nanacom regarding the shared, ac the shared access drive. Um, I don't think this board wants to be totally sort of said, well, we've now got it built. Oh, by the way, we haven't got the, the shared access drive or we're going to law about it. I think, I, I'm not saying I wouldn't agree to what you're asking, but I'm very bothered by what you said, if you understand the difference. Boy, I hate coming here and bothering people with what I say. That's the last thing any lawyer wants to do before this board. But when I, first on the, the mindful point, I didn't mean mindful in the sense that, um, well, we'll think about that later, maybe, when, That's we, when what we have I time. Sort of I meant that it's very much in the forefront of our mind okay. that presently the first phase requires a non-residential component to this project. Okay. And we have we debated that a lot that those nights last year, but we have not lost sight of it. It is, it is clear in our mind that that is a necessary component of the first phase. We fully recognize that. And I, Bernie has been working on that issue, too, but the... The, the what will be derived on that at the moment is not quite as imminent as what we've discussed previous on the other piece. The, the on the access issue, I can do the cop out that I'm I'm technically not representing them in the appeal. Other council are, but I I won't use that. Um, the probably the 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 best way that that issue comes to conclusion is the detailed site plan for that particular lot, because then. The abutter knows what we're planning and can react to what we're planning. And frankly, they've got multiple avenues of appeal that still are available to them. For example, if we have to amend the conditional use permit, which I expect we will, they've got that avenue of appeal. When we go to the site plan process, they've got that avenue. Um, it just, it's, to try to solve it now in a theoretical design of that access, is not the best way as opposed to a concrete design of that particular lot site. That's, that's, it, it's not to uh, slough over your role in it by any means. It's just to figure out in practical terms how do you get a handle on it. That, that's really what it boiled down to. So. Okay. Uh, on the second issue, I agree completely with Attorney Westgate that you just don't know when a site plan comes forward. These guys might have their their issues resolved and worked out and it may be acceptable and there isn't any continuation of a legal fight you just don't know until somebody puts it on paper so i would have done the same thing in his shoes so it makes on your on that mr chairman i'll be quiet <laughs> quiet you can speak when you need to um any other questions by members of the yeah. board jeff um, yeah uh, can you summarize uh, what you expect the major phases to be and when you think they'd actually be completed um i don't know bernie can you 
if, if you, yeah, I, th I mean, <coughs> you might be speculating, I know. Right. I, th I think we expect to come in the first phase with uh, what is known as the assisted living, the multifamily, and one of the commercial lots here in the next uh, perhaps 60 days. Perhaps sooner for, uh, in, in discussion with Tim, we'd have to, as Brad pointed out, we'd have to amend the conditional use yeah. permit and thereafter come back for site and subdivision approval. But I understand that. I was more interested in what your plans are for actually having it completed phase one, phase two, phase three, what they are, and roughly when you'd expect to have them done, ready for occupancy. Sort of what's your long range plan? Yeah, uh, assuming um, conditional use of site and subdivision approval by the end of the year, okay. for what I described as the first phase, yeah. and construction commencing, um, we expect to have the roadway in to get access to the site, and construction commencing in earnest on those improved, those, uh, structures by June 1st of next year. It will take them about 18 months to finish that. Okay. Let me jump in and both give the applicant a little room and then caution the board that those kinds of expectations are always subject to change, that the world doesn't always cooperate with everybody's ambitions. And I know that I, I, I've seen some hearings come before us where a change occurs, like the change in the CUP, and we've reacted to it as if it was some sort of a surprise or somehow that the applicant's done something wrong. And I don't want the world to think that we look at them that way because and you can always come and amend your proposals and ask for permission to, or, or delay or change time within the legal deadlines that you have to deal with. So I appreciate you sharing the information about what the expectations are, but I want to make clear I'm not, I'm not holding you to that right. commitment. That Thank you. Other questions or comments? Are there members of the public who wish to weigh in? I don't know that this is an appropriate uh, application that would require public hearing, but if there is any, I'd hear it. Seeing none, um, what's the will of the board with respect to the request for extension? Desiree. I'd like to make a motion. Take. I'd like to make a motion for um, a, uh, a give, granting a 12-month extension um, effective for the, the previous expiration date of August 19th, 2012, for um, making the new expiration date August 19th, 2016. Is there a second for Desiree's motion? I'll I saw second Jeff's hand. The correction is that uh, the previous expiration was August 19th, 2015. Yes, not 12. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I did see Jeff's hand go up first. So we'll recognize Jeff's second and uh, Nelson's correction. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Six Thank zero zero. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you. Now we'll get to the next item on the agenda that I tried to get to earlier. <laughs> Keach Nordstrom Associates Inc. as the applicant and Valley View Revocable Trust, Carol Maggio trustee as the owner. Reconsideration of the Planning Board's June 16, 2015 decision to deny the applicant's request to reinstate conditional final approval and a six-month extension for compliance with conditions of an approval granted by the Planning Board on July 23, 2013 and July 8, 2014 to subdivide one lot into two single-family residential lots located at 15 Valley View Drive in the R Residential District, Tax Map 5C, Lot 142. Jillian, is there anything that we need to know before we hear from the applicant's representative? Uh, the applicant seeking reinstatement of the approval for the two-lot subdivision, which the board decided to reconsider on July 7, 2015, and the staff memo gave a very detailed project history for your consideration tonight. Thank you for that. And for the board's refresher and perhaps the public's information, um, at least in my view, the vote to reconsider was based on the fact that when we decided not to grant the six-month extension the first time, we had incomplete or incorrect information as to what the applicant had accomplished in terms of his conditions of approval. And that was the reason for my support for the idea of reconsideration. With that, please introduce yourself and tell us where we're at. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board. My name is Pat Pianciarco. I'm uh, an attorney here representing the Valley View uh, Revocable Trust. And to pr just summarize briefly uh, this matter, this has been before you before. It's a two-lot subdivision after a variance was granted by the Zoning Board of Adjustment in 2012 uh, regarding the lot depth. 
the properties meet the size and frontage requirements um, of the town's regulations. They were, this plan was originally approved in July 23rd of 2013. It was subject to a number of administrative conditions, but they were not met and the approval expired in January of 2014. The board reinstated the approval in July of 2014 and imposed the same conditions but added other conditions relating to the administrative approval from 2012. There was also a requirement that the applicant come in um, approximately two months after that for a compliance hearing re regarding those additional conditions that related to the 2012 administrative approval. On November 7th, um, the staff's memo says that the precedent conditions had not been completed and the subdiv subdivision approval expired. But when we were here before the board before, uh, it was the conditions that were related to the administrative approval from 2012 that were not met. The conditions that were imposed on the two-lot subdivision from July of 2013 were met. And if you look forward in uh, the next page of the staff memo, it says, in fact, in the second paragraph down, the mylas and final plan sets were received in late October of 2014. Um, I have here copies of the transmittal memo from Keish Nordstrom, if the board would like a copy. This confirms that those plans were hand delivered on October 9th, um, at least almost a month before the approval of the two lot subdivision expired. In um, June, the board denied a request that the approval be reinstated. But in as was previously stated by Jillian, uh, the board agreed to reconsider that denial in July, early July and discuss it this evening. I'm here to ask that the board approve the two lot subdivision. The conditions have been met. I believe staff recommended that the plans be available for the board to sign for recording because the conditions that do relate to that approval were met. If there were any other questions, for me, I'm happy to answer them. I know you've heard far too much from me than you probably want to, but I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Okay, no need to apologize for comments and providing information. Are there questions by members of the board? No further questions from me, Jim. Are there members of the public and citizens who wish to weigh in on the board's deliberation and reconsideration? Take your time, Mr. Hammond. Over out. Uh, good evening. I'm Dave Hammond, 18 Valley View Drive. Uh, I'm sure it's no surprise to any of you that here we are again. Uh, a little sooner than I thought we'd be here again, but it is what it is. Um, one thing that stuck out to me in the letter that I received about the planning board meeting uh, tonight, this evening was July 23rd, 2013, which was two years ago almost, where this application was approved and the extension started from there. Now, I guess it's news to me that everything was satisfied in October of 2014, but still, almost, like I'll call it a year and a half at that point, I'm not sure what was on the list, but what would take a year and a half to get completed is amazing to me, but I'm not a subject matter expert on this. Um, as many of you know, there's a lot of things that did get done in that, that one and a half year time frame as three houses were built and sold. And it's no, I guess I'm not telling you something you don't already know, that these issues are not coming priority to Mr. Maggio until he's ready to move on to his next phase in the project. And here we are today. The house that's on that lot now is just about done. So we're, again, reviewing this same request for extension, or now 
a request saying everything's been done just because he's ready to move on, not because he got the effort done in a timely manner and to meet the requirements of the board. So I understand you have a tough decision in front of you, but my request or recommendation is that the, the board remain tough and stand on what the decision was, was made a month ago. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Mr. Hammond. Has, uh, a month ago when we uh, made the decision to call the bond that put the uh, emergency access road extension in the town's hands for completion has any work been done on that nothing's been done on that okay has mr. Maggio removed his equipment from the site or any of his so there's no equipment uh, by the road it's all on the, the lot that's okay. currently under construction okay and that house has not been completed yet uh, the house that's currently on the lot has not been completed it's just about there okay you still have your sign in your front yard? I do not, but I still have issues that haven't been resolved since our last meeting. Things have changed a little bit, so uh, it may be going back up. Understood. Any other questions by members of the board? Thank you so much for your testimony. Thank you. Mrs. Amick, thanks for coming in. See the thing, you guys have been here 18 <laughs> times. <laughs> Seriously, I'm not kidding. There's yeah, 18 items on here. I'm Shauna Amick. I'm at 11 Valley View. And um, I thank you for this opportunity to come before you and talk about um, something that's obviously very important to the people who are affected by it, the residents of Valley View. Um, and what I come before you tonight for is the same thing I come every time is to talk about uh, the access road which is not an access road it is a two-way town road that is what it's used for and um, I'm curious to learn tonight how that could be approved what conditions needed to be met in order to get a town road that is not enforceable um, as an access road. Was there incomplete or incorrect information given two years ago or, or anywhere along the process that would permit such a road? Um, because if you were to go there, if you were to, to put your eyes on the road, to drive up it, as I know some of you have, um, to walk on it in the other direction, you would see that the road um, grade, the curve, uh, the incline creates several blind spots. Uh, because of the incline, and I, I've, I've said all this, uh, I think the first night I came, you know, a year or whatever ago, the, the incline um, encourages people to go up the hill very fast. So we're not only looking at people going at least 40 up a, what is a one lane road, but it is used as two way traffic. We're looking at them going up at 40, 40 miles an hour around a curve. You can't see around it, it's impossible. If there is a child uh, or an adult for that matter on the access road, which, um, in many ways, and this is certainly not a complaint, the access road has become almost a, a neighborhood park. It is very well, very heavily utilized by dog walkers and by children, uh, the, other than my own children, because I, I won't let my kids on it. It's not safe. Uh, but there are children from all over the neighborhood who come, they bring their bikes, they bring their scooters, their skateboards, they're having a blast. And I am terrified that someone is going to get killed because the town has chosen not to um, block off or gate this. I understand that um, the decision to put a gate on this road is, and please correct me where I'm wrong, that's made by a different committee. Is that, is that correct? In, in part, um, there's a lot of moving pieces and parts involved here. Um, and to start at the beginning, um, the road is an emergency access road because of the physical dimensions of it. 
and if Mr. Maggio had been able to acquire the property rights necessary to build it wider like a full town road, he could have proposed that and then asked the town to accept it as a town road. But he didn't have the ability to do that, so he built an emergency access road, um, which the board gave him permission to do. Mm -hmm. The emergency access road ultimately, after it's approved and built, has to be accepted by the town, mm -hmm. which is a town council function. Um, and that's sort of the last piece to the puzzle to figure out how do you enforce it as an emergency access road instead of being a town road. And I know that the chief of police had requested an action item before the town council, I don't know if it's been heard yet, um, to consider some amendments to ordinances to allow them the ability to enforce it as an mm -hmm. emergency access road. Um, and that's, I, I think, a work in progress. I don't think anybody's looking at that and saying, well, that's done and we don't plan to do any more mm -hmm. about it. The original decision to whether to gate it or not was at the recommendation of the fire department who is looking at it and saying if it's an emergency access road, gating it um, doesn't serve that function or it doesn't serve that function well. Um, and that's consistent advice that they've given on virtually every application that I've seen with the gated access, save for one, which is the outlet mall. It's the only one that I know of that the fire department has been okay with the idea of a gated emergency access road. Usually, even if somehow we've gone against it, it's been over their objection because they don't like them. And mm -hmm. I understand that a fire engine that has to stop to open a gate has got an obstacle, and then you're fumbling around trying to figure out mm -hmm. where you're going and do you have the keys and all of that kind of stuff. And I'm sure that there's ways to smooth out that process, but nonetheless, the recommendation not to gate it was at the behest of the emergency services folks mm -hmm. who felt like to function as emergency access road, it had to be ungated. But that doesn't mean that it can be a two-way town road and it shouldn't be. And I think that the police are doing what they can through the Highway Safety Committee to get the authority to actually ticket people for driving on it because it's an emergency access road. And I guess that will involve some signs that say emergency access, do not enter, do not use, and all of that sort of thing. Does that mean that everybody will follow those instructions 24 hours a day? Of course not, not unless there's a police officer mm -hmm. standing there. Mm -hmm. But for the handful of people who live in the neighborhood mm -hmm. who are kind of cut in the corner right now, um, a ticket or two would probably calm that down a long, long way, and mm -hmm. you won't need regular enforcement. But I am kind of pleased that you're saying that if we can keep cars off of it, it's actually a pretty good amenity for the community to have some space where people can walk their dogs and and the kids with the bikes and all that. But the car's got to stay off to make that work, obviously. Yeah. So, Because I can imagine a fire truck would be able to blast through a gate, but once a car kills a kid, it's over. No right? No question. Um, and, and this is this is real. You know, I'm 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 um, I'm hoping you're correct with the police issue. I'm confused about it because that's not what I hear from the police. Um, we had a situation, and it would have been um, it would have been that last full week of June, where we had um, I'll call them utility trucks. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. They didn't have any writing on the sides um, like the rest of, you know, Mr. Maggio's crew does where I can identify who's driving by. But there was okay. a, a large, um, again, utility van is what it was, that would come from the other end of Valley View using the access road, um, park in front of our house, stay in the van, look around, Stay, stay for long enough where it was it was just uncomfortable, drive down to the bottom of our hill, turn around and go back up the access road to the other side. And this happened a few times to the point where uh, I called the police, not because I'm asking, hey, there's somebody using the access road, but because clearly someone is casing our house, you know, for whatever purpose, I don't know. And um, a police officer came and he explained to me, you know, we can't enforce them using the road. And that was the point of getting some action from the town council to allow that to happen. And I'm trying to find it here. Oh, so, Mr. Yeah, Chairman. July 6th um, was when I got an email from the chief of police. Right, and he submitted, he sent something to, I believe he sent something to the council alerting us to the issue. 
And I think that, it takes a little while for that process. To and happen. that it would probably it will probably be on our August agenda, mm -hmm. August the twentieth. Okay. Are you able to talk to them? I mean, can you? Am I right that this is the board that approved that it would go in in the first place? Yes, although there's again there's more moving parts to that because ultimately it has to be accepted as a town-owned access road, even though it's not mm -hmm. a town-owned full road. But and that's the town council and Councillor Mehan is our representative mm -hmm. from the council to the planning board. So okay. in essence, you kind of are talking to. Okay. <laughs> and, the, and, the issue, and the issue is is that without authority through an ordinance yeah. to enforce access or to enforce uh, speed or to enforce a stop sign if it's not in the ordinance we can't that the police department has no authority to enforce mm -hmm. it and if you were to if you were to cite somebody and take them in the court they'd be thrown at the judge would be out of his mind uh, yeah. throw them out on the rear because you've got nothing to there's nothing to enforce here right Okay. Well, that, that makes me, you know, I, I have two comments. I'm grateful to hear that. The one, they're, they're um, very on different ends of the spectrum here. The one comment is that we were told, that's myself and my husband and also our neighbors, that we could not put any kind of temporary um, barricade up to discourage people from driving. How can that be enforced? I mean, if, if a car can drive on it without consequence, then I should be able to put a, saw, you know, a, a sawhorse out there that says, there, "Don't there. travel here," and that's not going to be enforced <coughs> either. Me, is believe, that correct? I believe that there is an obstruction of the roadway ordinance, and that would be considered obstruction of the roadway. Okay. Uh, okay. And that's, it's. The. Large crack you sometimes fall through with these mm -hmm. things because of, the time it takes for, a ordinance to be drafted or to or the issues that you're raising here mm -hmm. uh, to come to the attention of the authority uh, who has the ability to, to take some action uh, to prevent it or to modify it mm -hmm. or to do something like that so the issue here is uh, you know there is a an obstruction of the roadway ordinance um, and you know um, so that's that's probably what they're working off of mm -hmm. No, and yeah. uh, what what needs to happen is the backup for that, and that is, you can't use this road. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, and that's that is in progress. That's not. I mean, it takes a little while to get an ordinance amendment, and the town council's mm -hmm. got to do a reading and a public hearing and uh, three readings all together. It's got to it three it, 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 meetings. That it will take seven weeks. Seven weeks from. Well, if it if it's read, if it's introduced on the twentieth of August, that's the first reading. Mm -hmm. Then it would be a public hearing at our first meeting in September, which would be the second Thursday in September, and then the charter uh, requires us to wait at least seven days before we act on, before we take any action on the issue. Mm -hmm. So whether we either vote it up or we vote it down, so that usually pushes it off. Would push it off to the second meeting. In September, uh, to comply with the uh, the piece of the or, or of the uh, ordinance section of the mm -hmm. charter that deals with adoption, which requires that waiting period before we take final action. Okay. And I think the other element that's sort of fallen through the cracks is now that the thing is at least somewhat paved, um, but there's no signs on it that say emergency access road. And yes, the, there are. There are. Yep, there's a sign on each end that says emergency and authorized vehicles only. Okay. And then there's a sign on each end that says, um, I don't remember now if it says no outlet or I think it says no outlet. They're ugly signs. I'm, I, you know, if they're not going to be adhered to, I'd love them to go away because they're on my property. So when I hear you say there are going to be more yeah. signs, I hope they're not on my property. Um, I didn't know that there was any signs. I was thinking that there's, there has to be some signs to tell the public not to use it, obviously. Yeah. And if it, it, I was supposing that people might be using it like this utility truck because they didn't see any signage that said otherwise. But if you're telling me there is signs there, then just out of respect for not wanting to break a law, even if they don't know mm -hmm. that there isn't one, yeah. I would no, think there's that no they respect. No, there are four signs. Yeah, and I've been bringing it up for over a year. You know, so I appreciate your comment about how once 
you're aware of it or whoever needs to be aware of it, then it's from that time on. It, it, we've been aware of this for over a year. Um, well, see, until, until, until the planning board called the bond, mm -hmm. we had no authority. Mm -hmm. okay, once they called the bond, now, now it belongs to us. Okay. okay. We've essentially said we're taking it because we're calling the bond. We're going to bring the road up to town standards, and therefore it, we're, we're essentially accepting the road or accepting the work that's been done there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So until the point in time when they yanked the bond, uh, we had no that the council had no authority over that road. Okay. And then the, the signs and the access and the acceptance of it would have come at the applicant's behest when he was ready to mm -hmm. turn it over to the town. Uh -huh. So that's really kind of the way that yeah. timing gets. And of yeah. course, we all know all the history that's made it take longer and mm -hmm. be more involved than we all wanted it to be. Right, right. All right. Well, I'm, you know, again, nothing's happening and. It, it just seems, I don't know if there's even any way to change things for the future, not even for this project, because I, I have, you know, such little hope for it, but this seems very irresponsible. It seems irresponsible that an access road would be approved, and here we are years later, and we've got this issue. This is an urgent issue. You know, that's great if seven weeks after August 20th, maybe, we're going to get you know the town in support of keeping its kids alive maybe maybe not but that's you know that's seven weeks after August 20th that's a lot of time where there can be a, a, a fatal accident I'm not speaking in extremes if you think I am I come spend a minute in the location and see how dangerous it is so I do caution you a little bit because I do get the idea that there's kids out in the road and mm -hmm. cars are going to come down it and Everybody that lives on one of the subdivision streets in town notices cars very frequently that are going faster than they should go on a subdivision road, and you always want to do something about it, and there's not really a whole lot you can do about it. Um, but signs or an ordinance or even the police's ability to enforce it doesn't prevent that from occasionally happening. Mm -hmm. And so some of that has to be everybody else's responsibility to understand where you let your kids go to play. and. Uh, right. I know that you've made the common sense decision not to let your kids go and do that because of what you've seen in there. Um, but a sign and an ordinance and police enforcement doesn't guarantee that it'll never happen. I mean, pe kids can play well, in the I know. wrong place. Well, I know. A child could, so. you know, play on the highway and get killed. Yeah, I understand that. So. I'm just, you know, I, I have nowhere else to go. And I, I feel like nobody is concerned about the people who live on the street. And so I live on the street. My kids live on the street. This is happening. It's not a matter of a regular subdivision. It's not a subdivision. It's a dead end yep. that you know has no visibility and now has been is being used as a two-way street. I understand that. I am concerned about the issue. I have kids. I don't want neighborhoods to be that way, and I'm very sympathetic to all that you've gone through. Um, I do have to add, though, whether we reinstate a subdivision and allow Mr. Maggio to build a house doesn't change the situation with the access road. We're in I understand it. that. I, I understand that. I just yeah. have no other way of talking to you Understood. Other, other than coming here this evening. And I appreciate your passion mm -hmm. and your interest in the subject, mm -hmm. so thank you for doing that. Are there other questions or comments by members of the board? Thank you for your testimony. Are there other butters or citizens who wish to weigh in on this one? Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing. What's the will of the board? Mr. Chairman, I would just like to make a, a simple statement. Um, I was brought up believing that a gentleman's word was his bond. I've always believed that statements or commitments made to this planning board should be taken as a firm promise that we could take to the bank. I realize the original approval was, con was contingent on the completion of the road without it being a formal condition of approval. But we all know that the two lot subdivision depended on that emergency road being constructed. Mr. Maggio, as we well know, has not provided the road himself. Despite all his promises, all his commitments, both him from Tony Basso and Pete Julia from Keith Nordstrom, we had promise after promise 
of the promise. My view is if Mr. Maggio hasn't kept his promise, why should we keep ours? Which is why I don't see why we should provide the subdivision. I'm aware that the law, as explained to me by your good self, by the town's attorney and Mr. Maggio's attorney, says that it, that state law allows this to happen. But I'd like to quote the school superintendent, Mr. Bumble, from the Charles Dickens novel, over Oliver mm -hmm. Twist. If that is the law, sir, then the law is an ass. And I personally think we should deny the application purely on the grounds that we have been misled from start to finish on this project and I can't sleep in my bed knowing that we've not acted in what I consider to be the best interests of the town and the abutters. And that's all I would like to say. Thank you for your comment. Does anyone else have any comments or questions that they wish to put forth? Seeing none, what's the will of the board? Mr. Chairman, I move that we grant the reinstatement of the expired approval and authorize the chair and secretary to sign the final plans and mylars. Motion by Councillor Mahan. Is there a second for the motion? Second by Jeff Sebring. Any other questions or comments? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Any abstaining? 5102 reinstate the um, subdivision and grant authority to sign the mylars. And with that, um, I have to add my own comment that I regret having to provide that relief because I agree that Mr. Maggio has misled us, but he has um, supplied the information that's necessary to complete his conditions of approval, and with that, that's all that's required of him. The next item on our agenda is home health and hospice care as the applicant and owner and its review for acceptance and consideration of final approval for a waiver of full site plan review for a proposed parking lot expansion for an existing two-story office building. The parcel is located at 7 Executive Park Drive in the C2 General Commercial Aquifer Conservation District and 100 and 500 year flood hazard areas, tax map 4D lot 71. Jillian, is there anything that we need to know before we hear from the applicant? The applicant's here for acceptance and consideration of a waiver of full site plan review um, for a simple parking lot expansion for an existing two-story office building. Um, they've also asked for a waiver of sidewalks. I believe that's the only other one. Take your time to get settled in and sign in, then introduce yourself and tell us what you have proposed. Swanson, uh, representing Home Health and Hospice Care tonight. Is your microphone on? All I can barely hear you. Not. Bring, oh, the lights on. The bright bring, lights on. Okay, bring it a little closer to you then. Okay. If you can. Appreciate that. Um, the um, as Jillian said, the plan we have before you tonight is a, a minor um, site plan for a small parking expansion. Uh, the existing site. Uh, is a 2.4 acre uh, C2 commercial lot right here located on the east side of uh, Executive Park Drive. Uh, it's, uh, the address is 7 Executive Park Drive, uh, lot uh, tax map 4D, um, lot 71. Uh, the lot was developed in the uh, early to mid 80s. Um, it has a two-story office building located right here. Uh, it was actually originally both of these office buildings were developed at the same time on a single lot. It was then subdivided, sub subsequently subdivided uh, so that the remaining lot is uh, two stories, 20,825 square feet of commercial office. 
um, with 69 parking spaces uh, currently. Um, the um, abutting lots are um, zone commercial on the south, west, and north. Um, with this being the uh, Boomer McLeod lot that's um, currently under construction. Um, the <coughs> hotel, former hotel property, uh, this is vacant. And uh, this has parking for the uh, Cinemagic Theater, which is located here. And then on the east side is um, the uh, F.E. Everett Turnpike. Um, let me just flip to a larger scale plan, which basically just concentrates on this end of the site. Uh, the site does have two access drives, uh, and we're not proposing to change that at all. Uh, the easterly end of the, of the property is uh, heavily wooded, and then it slopes down into a deep ravine. Natica Brook flows along off the property uh, on the south, uh, to the south of the property, and then just cuts across the southeast corner of the property. And there's, a, as, as was said, there's associated uh, wetland and floodplain down in that ravine. Um, this area of the site is cleared. Uh, the previous landowner had, um, that area was fenced. There was a trailer there and they used it for uh, equipment testing. So that area has been cleared and level for as long as I'm aware. Um, and that, and then there's a underground utility run, both uh, telephone electric, um, that runs right along the edge of the woods through here. Matter of fact, those um, facilities were just recently upgraded um, for primarily for the benefit of the Boomer McLeod site. Uh, and these are the areas that basically we're looking to do the expansion. Um, uh, we uh, want to minimize um, any tree cutting and we want to stay off from that slope. So we're just utilizing the areas that are already um, already cleared and uh, have been previously used. So let me show you what we have in mind. Uh, we are doing a little bit of reconfiguration of the existing parking area just to make it a little more efficient. Uh, we're removing, there's a row of parking right here, which we are removing, and then we're basically adding this row and this expansion to the south. Uh, for a net gain of 27 parking spaces, which uh, home health uh, really needs. This is the this office building is used as their headquarters. Uh, they are sorely in need of additional parking. They've approached the town for what options they might have. Uh, they were wondering because Executive Park Drive is was designed as a wide boulevard, and it's really not. It's wider than it needs to be. They inquired about uh, parallel parking along the curb which the town didn't want them to do. So that's why we're in uh, with this plan. Um, it uh, adds about 8,000 square feet of pavement, so it's a very small impact plan. Uh, however, we have designed uh, a stormwater. We're adding a catch basin, um, which drains into a uh, infiltration, uh, detention and infiltration system uh, underneath the parking lot to mitigate the uh, increased in runoff from the increased pavement area. Um, we went to the Conservation Commission last night uh, because the site, uh, as a good part of the town is, is in the conservation, uh, the Aquifer Conservation District. Uh, and I believe you should have an email uh, from, yeah. from them um, with their comments, they, they were uh, in support of this, uh, had a couple minor comments, which we were happy to uh, address. Um, as I said, we're really, we're, we're really trying to hold the edge of the existing woods and take advantage of the existing uh, level high ground uh, and stay away from um, that embankment and well away from the brook. Uh, so that's pretty much, it's a simple proposal. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions that uh, board members have. For the benefit of the board members, the email from the Conservation Commission, and you were just there last night. Yes. 
is the commission appreciates the applicant's non-use of salt or de-icing compounds. So apparently you've gotten a note on your plan indicating you're not going to do that. We do. Uh -huh. The commission recommends that only no phosphate slow-release nitrogen fertilizers be used. Due to the vicinity of the Natticook Brook, the commission recommends no phosphates be used in any fertilizer applications. The commission further recommends that the applicant's contractor and later users first utilize a soil testing facility to determine what levels and application rates may be necessary before doing any applications of fertilizers on the site. The third uh, comment is the commission didn't, did not have a stormwater report to reference. Mr. Blatchford noted that there would be a net decrease in water leaving the site in the 50-year event. We asked the town staff in the planning process review the report and let the commission know if there are any items that may be of concern to the commission. And those are all three of their comments. So um, fairly consistent with the kinds of reports we see from the commission, and I agree with you that they seem supportive of it. Um, are there questions from the board? Um, I, <clears throat> I have a question on the parking. Um, how does the new parking compare with our new parking requirements for this type of building? Um, they're required to have 70 spaces, and they'd like to go above and beyond that. They want to go beyond yeah. that. By how many to what? 70? It's about 27. 96. Yeah. So there's currently 69 spaces. Um, 70 is required, as Jillian said, and we're looking for, uh, with this expansion, we'd have 96 spaces. Okay. Yeah. So but that's what you need, of course, for your business. I yes. just wanted to know how it stacked up with our ordinance and just to yeah. see how it yeah. me meets how it and then some. What? Meets it and then and some. And then some, yeah. And so that's just something to keep in mind, uh, you know, yeah. the ordinances. Um, yeah, I think it still it still falls. You know, right now you're closer yeah. to four per thousand. This brings it up a little closer to five per thousand, yeah. which is still within a, a normal range. Yeah. Yeah. Really depends on the user. Okay, thank you. Thank Any you. Any other comments or questions by the board? What's the will of the board with respect to accepting the application? Application is complete. Chairman, I make a motion that we regard this application as complete for f and con to allow for consideration of it. Is there a second for that motion? Second by Mr. Disco. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Sorry, that was an aye. That was a late aye. <laughs> Six zero zero to accept the application as complete. Um, the applicant has requested a waiver of full site plan review. What's the will of the board with respect to that request? Go on, Nelson. Nelson. Yes, I would move that we uh, waiver full site plan review for this minor change to the sub to the subdivided lot to the su to the site plan. Oh, a second for Nelson's yeah. motion? Wait, 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 wait. On the basis that oh, the specific basis. circumstances relative to the site plan indicate that the waiver will carry out the spirit and intent of the regulations. So and it's Nelson. a minor, sub minor addition to the, yeah. to the plan. Okay. <laughs> and Jeff, you had the second on that? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? 600 to grant waiver of full site plan review. Um, there's nobody in the room who might testify, but we'll open up a public hearing briefly to see if there's a butters or interested citizens. Seeing none, close the public hearing. Um, what's the will of the board with respect to the applicant's request for a waiver of uh, pay pedestrian way along the existing and proposed streets? I'd like, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the, um, oh, crud, the uh, waiver request. Waiver request. For the waiver request. Oh, wait, for sidewalk? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, for sidewalks. Yes. Oh, wait. Sorry, that was what I meant to go for, but sure. Sidewalks. Um, Which of your two Yeah, for the second here? one. <laughs> for the second one, specific circumstances relative to the site plan or conditions of, of the land in such the site plan indicate the waiver will carry out the uh, spirit and intent of the regulations. Thank you, Desiree, for the motion. Is there a second? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Second by Mr. Milnes. Um, any discussion? Sidewalk waiver? The only thing that I would add is that we granted the same waiver to Boomer McLeod next door. So that yeah, seems makes to be the way that we've approached this neighborhood. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? 600 to grant the waiver. Uh, what's the will of the board with respect to final action on the application? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we give final approval for home, home health and hospice care to extend their car park with the conditions such as they are that 
provided by our Gillian Harris on her memo of July the 15th of 2015. Is there a second for that motion? Second by Ms. Fault. Any discussion? Uh, one minor discussion. Uh, it, the uh, conditions you've applied say that the applicant shall address any forthcoming comments from the Conservation Commission. And the Conservation Commission has now, in fact, commented, and I would presume that this motion means that uh, CLD will review the drainage based on the Conservation Commission's. I didn't see that. The Conservation Commission's recommendation is that the staff review yeah. the submission. Right. What, what happened? We did submit the um, drainage studies in our waiver request. We requested, uh, as part of the waiver of full site plan review, we requested uh, kind of specifically um, one of the two things that we pointed out specifically was a uh, waiver of, um, of outside Peer review. And review, peer review, yeah, mm -hmm. because of the, the the small scale and simplicity. But we did provide the uh, we did provide uh, three copies of the study. One of them, as I as I understood it um, from Donna, who I know is no longer here, was that one of those copies was going to go to the um, conservation commission. But I think and and in fact, and if I if I heard you right, Mr. Chairman, when you read what they said, what the staff implied that in fact the, dr the amount of water running off the site was actually less because of the, dr the, the drainage uh, s yeah. things they put yeah. in. So well, I, I think that's the applicant noted that, not the staff, but then the Conservation Commission just asked that the town staff and planning process review the report and let the commission know if there are any items that may be of concern to the commission. So they weren't asking for outside peer review. I misunderstood yeah. as you were speaking then. I'm yeah. sorry, I probably so was let's, rambling let's, through it. No, no I, you read it. You read it from <laughs> Um So with that, are you proposing that we amend the conditions or that you understand the condition now as they are made, which is to say the staff will take a look at the applicant's I drainage would, calcs? I would be happy if the staff looked at it. Okay. Yeah, I know. I think now, is that is. covered by, the, by this note, I guess? Yes, it is. You, you think yeah, it is? There is a, there is a con. Kyle Fox, sorry to interrupt, but Kyle Fox has looked at the study. Uh, he called me. He, he had one comment, um, uh, a request really, to see if we could uh, accommodate um, some of the runoff from the existing parking lot uh, in our infiltration system, for some of the smaller. Um, so we're taking a look at that right now. Um, we, I told him that kind of just shooting from the hip that we would look at the one and the two-year storm. Which are usually the ones where the highest concentrations of sediment and constituents wash off from the. Uh, uh, those are the ones that are most effectively treated. So I told him we'd look at how much additional runoff for those smaller storms we could accommodate in the infiltration system that we designed. So without the need to ex to expand it, and he he said that would uh, was all he was looking for. Okay, and you've provided the information to uh, the community development department demonstrating that the water runoff from the site is going to be less than it is today? Yes, those, okay. those calculations have been provided and they're all summarized in the uh, executive summary in the front of the report. Yep. Okay. And Kyle's comment is captured in the conditions of approval in the memo as well. Okay. For my benefit, what are you doing on the site to make your runoff less than it is today? Infiltration. No infiltration. Yeah, we, we Infiltrating have, in there? Yeah, we're, we're capturing uh, all of this runoff. Uh, it goes you know, we have catch basin here. It's piped into, um, we have a 36-inch perforated pipe in a trench surrounded by stone. It's detained in there, and it, it percolates into the ground. If okay. you're familiar with this area or if you've, if you've driven by here and seen any of the Boomer McLeod construction going on, you know there's deep, clean sand deposits out here, so it uh, it's, it's, uh, perks very well. Okay. And it, as far as we know, it goes. It, it, mm -hmm. There's no ledge out here, so yeah. it's a very it's a very good medium for uh, infiltrating small water. And you're doing to get at an underground facility under your parking lot itself. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah, and it's just it's just one stick of pipe, basically 50 feet of 36 inch perforated pipe. So it's a very small, simple system, but okay. it's a small area of pavement that we're we're mitigating. So 36 inch pipe is got some capacity to it, so I don't think you'll have a problem with it. Yes, and that's the kind of the de detention capacity. It, mm. it has to hold water for 
a period of time while it percolates. So. Yep. And it will it works up through um, the 50 year storm. We check from the two up through the 50 year storm, and it infiltrates the entire 50 year storm. There's nothing. We do have an emergency overflow, but there's nothing coming out of it until you get beyond the 50 year storm. Okay. So. Thank you for that. Other comments or questions? There is a motion and a second properly made to grant final approval subject to the conditions in Jillian's memo. If there's no other discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Six zero zero. Great. Thank you very much for your time. Thank well, you. Thank all. you. And welcome. Nice to see something growing. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Item eight on our agenda is discussion and possible action regarding other items of concern. I do not have any. Does anyone have any items of concern they'd like to discuss tonight? Um, the only thing I would think, Mr. Chairman, is in view of the saga of Valley View Drive, I think it might behove this committee at some point in time to sit and consider whether in the event that somebody um, gets a bond called, we should have some sort of further sanction that could be, should be used to um, protect the town and its citizens going forward. Um, I, I agree with that notion. I think that the way that this all worked out was what was required by the law, but I don't like it. And I think that we ought to take a look and see what there is in our regulations that could give us some different choices, if there are any. And maybe there aren't. Yeah. But I think that we owe it to the town to take a look when, when a situation like this happens so that we don't do it again if we can avoid it. I mean, the last, the only other times yeah. that I can recall that we've pulled bonds is because the, the builder, the constructor, or the developer, or whatever word you like to use, has gone belly up, bankrupt, sorry. Um, and therefore, it was an obvious sanction. He's gone bust. This one's such a different one, I think we have to look at it. Maybe. Personally. Um, obviously not tonight, but I think that obviously it is worth, not tonight, <laughs> worth the Mr. right Chairman. comment to, to say, taking a look at it and seeing if there's ways to well, I think we should ask the community development if they could look at it. Keep in mind that you had Wasserman Heights. We did. We Thank had, you. and we they did. came back. Yes. Yes, and we've had other, there's others yes, too. Yes, that's true enough. Thank you. But I think that uh, you will run into some issues of the law mm -hmm. if you try and apply sanctions against a particular. Mr. Perhaps, and maybe sanctions yeah. isn't the right word, but I think that well, there ought to be a way to uh, address a development gone wrong um, for the best interest of others in the community. Yeah, well, that's after the fact, unfortunately. I think he was wanting to be more proactive at the beginning of the... No, as, as no I I'm simply the, saying uh, that if the thing goes wrong as this one has, and, and with great respect to his attorney who's still sitting in the back of the room, there's no way you could call this a satisfactory, it's been a satisfactory project. I think we have to examine how we handle such situations in the future. And I think we've been uh, not railroaded, we've followed the law as it is, state law and town ordinances, we've followed them to the letter. I think we need to look at them for the future. I, and I agree with that. And even if it's, if it is a result where Tim and his folks or, or the town's legal counsel says there's really nothing that you can add to your ordinances to change the situation, then so be it. At least we've investigated yeah. that and we know that that is what it is. Sure. Um, and if there is something that can be done, I'm in favor of exploring it. I'm all for exploration. There we go. <laughs> and I don't know what the result will be, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Um, any other comments or questions under discussion and action regarding other items of concern. Seeing none, that brings us to the approval of the minutes of July 7th, 2015. Desiree. And I make a motion that we approve the minutes subject to a couple of changes that I had on here. What are your changes? Uh, on page two, line 58, I just wanted to add, because this, uh, they broke out this sentence or this to its own paragraph, I wanted to add to the beginning, Attorney Pachinko, uh, I apologize if I said that wrong, stated page that- what page? Two. Page two, line, line 59. 59. 59. I want to yeah. add to the front of 58, sorry, to the front of 58, I wanted to mention that it was, that it was Attorney Pacheco that stated there have been three public notices, any comments have been addressed, adequate notice has been met, although the applicant will take the risk of another public notice because I don't want it to look as though maybe we were saying that. Yes, good point. Pensiaco, did I do that Pensiaco. better? Thank you. 
I have a hard time remembering that. <laughs> okay. Just in, uh, and then I had one other comment on page three, line 90. Um, and I want to modify and say, instead of saying no notice is a danger for the board, I wanted to say no notice increases the risk to the board. Well, it's not necessarily, I don't know, it just seems weird, danger. I'm not sure that the board is at risk or at danger, but <laughs> no notice is a better public policy. I'll go with that. <laughs> yeah, it has a better word, yeah. I probably said danger, but I, I, I'd be happy if somebody wants to sort of change the word. Okay. Like I said at the meeting, nobody's going to hijack us in the parking lot. <laughs> Don't be sure of that one. <laughs> any other changes? Is there a second for the motion to accept the I'll minutes? second that, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Anybody else have any other amendments? <coughs> yeah, I have a couple suggested Nelson. improvements. What have we got? Uh, page 3, line 103. Uh, the first sentence in that paragraph says, uh, Matty Chueri uh, said the seating area in the terrace is on the floor plan. Then he goes on, it goes on to say, Mr. Joseph said the senior center has no problem. I think we should make it clear that Mr. Chueri said that Mr. Joseph said, because Mr. Joseph wasn't Mr. here. Mr. Joseph was not here, and this mm -hmm. is Mr. Chueri's take on what our How about if we say Mr. Joseph told, now I guess Mr. Chueri told the board that Mr. Joseph yeah. said. Yeah, to that effect, you know. Something along those mm -hmm. lines. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mr. Schwery stated that Mr. Joseph of the senior center him. has no problems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. On the same page, line 112, um, the, unless the document gives a permanent right to use the lots instead of us the lots, and the plan does not define the curb between use, the parking lot. Yeah, it's got to be It should be a curb between the parking lot and Church Street. Mm -hmm. And then page five, um, the w line 198, Desiree. Desiree Fault said this would help with the lack of workforce housing in Merrimack, and it should be encouraged. I'm not convinced, nor have I been convinced, that there is a lack of workforce <laughs> housing in Merrimack. Um, but um, if that's what you said. Well, it's, it's I wasn't saying necessarily just workforce housing. I think it got abbreviated it, to that. I it was would saying Turn the microphone on Desiree. What? Oh. I, oh, well. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps the right word is would, would increase the supply of workforce housing. Would that be that sound would, better? Well, well, let me caution everybody to take a look at the difference between making syntax and grammatical errors and changing the substance of what Desiree said. Because well, that is what she said. And maybe that's what she meant or not. And well, if it's is that all I said, though? I it's for her to make. <laughs> yes. I, well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. You go ahead. I, it's up to you to want to change. I haven't offered any change to this. I just disagree with it. And and if you want it to say that, if you think there's a lack of workforce housing, and that's the way it is, that's the way it is. But I don't know that we ever. I think the sentence simplifies what I said. Because what I said was a two-part. I said first that I think Lynn would like would have something to say on this because of that reason. But it was more to the effect of having apartments available for young adults and new families. Small. I mean, I didn't necessarily say just workforce housing, but I would have to listen to it again okay. to say. So I can't. I can't sh straight modify it without changing the content. I did say workforce housing, but I said more than that. It's, it's your statement, so if you want to make the changes to it substantively, obviously, to make it me say what you meant it to say, but I was just suggesting that other board members <laughs> ought not, Keep <laughs> <the mouth laughs> ought not yeah. disagree with what you said and <laughs> vote <Yeah>. you down <laughs> in the process. I know that the concept of workforce housing itself ends up stirring a lot of differences of opinions because it's an odd term of art that defines workforce housing in a way that's different from what maybe a person in the workforce might think is affordable <laughs> to them. <laughs> yes. But or who's in the workforce for that matter. Or but who's that's in the another workforce. issue. <laughs> so to the effect of that then um, I I guess I'll leave it and 
try to find an audio tape of it or something. Like, I haven't been able to find the, the YouTube. I guess we have these things uploaded, the meeting yeah, minutes. Going like, if I can just listen to it audio-wise, just listen to that part, and I would supplement it to it'd be a couple of words that I would add would be to the extent of it. But. If you go to the town's website and click on Merrimack TV, you can find okay. the links to all the meetings. Um, I don't know how easy it is to sort of zip to the part you want to hear. You can't. Gotta I'd say to you got to look at thing. you know page five of seven. You're going two thirds of the way through or something. But mm -hmm. okay. any other comments or questions on minutes? No. See if you get track of the time hacks during the meeting, then you can go right to it. <laughs> but if you don't, don't keep track of the time hacks, that's it. You got to start. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? 600 to approve the minutes as amended, which brings us to item 10 on our agenda, which is to adjourn. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we adjourn. Seconded by Jeff Sebring. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? 600, we're adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone, and don't forget to turn your microphones on.